Raise your hand if you've watched hundreds of tutorials on web development, but still when you go to build out different parts of your own projects, you constantly find yourself getting stuck and not knowing what to do. If that's the case, then this trick that I'm going to show you with comments may be the exact thing you need to move past your roadblocks. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can use comments to actually make writing code easier. Now imagine that you're tasked with building out a modal, and someone gives you this HTML and CSS and says, hey, build me a modal. Now, depending on your skill level, this could be a trivial task or it could be an incredibly difficult task. And if it's easy for you, just imagine that this is a more complicated problem, the code is more complex, and you're not really sure where to get started or what to do. I'm just using this modal example because it's a really easy example for me to explain my thought process here. So imagine you're looking at this and you just don't know where to start. You know, like this is a lot to do. I don't know really what to do. The best thing that you can do in this type of scenario is start writing out comments that explain exactly what you can do. Because otherwise you're going to open up a script.js file and you're going to look at it and it's going to look like this, a blank field and you have no idea where to get started. So instead what I want you to do is write out comments step by step of everything that needs to happen for this modal to work and do a high level example of like what in the world is this modal doing? So obviously the first thing I need to do is I need to link a script tag. This script tag is going to be added onto the page to import all my JavaScript. Great, so let's save that and do that. And the next thing I wanna do is write out all the steps inside of here for how this modal works. So let me just show you all these steps here. We have our different to-dos. We have two, three, and four, and that's just because step one is linking the script tag. The first thing I need to do is I need to select all the elements I'm going to use. And here I wrote out the ID for all the different elements that I'm using. I have my modal, I have the open modal button, the close modal button, and the overlay. And those all align inside of here with my HTML. So I've kind of listed out, here's the different components that I have that I need to use to make this modal work. And then what I did is I said, hey, okay, the first thing I need to do is make it so the modal opens. So I need to create a listener that listens for clicks on this button, and I need to add the class open to the modal, because that's the class here that makes it so it's visible. Same thing down here, I wanna create a click event listener for closing it, that removes that class. And then you'll also notice I have these bonus sections. These bonus sections all deal with the overlay. And that's because this overlay is not really essential to the modal operation. If you didn't have this overlay, the modal would still work just fine. So that's why I put it in a bonus section because when I'm working on a project, especially a more difficult project that I don't really know what to do, I like to get the smallest, most minimal version of that project working first. And then I can add in additional things like this overlay that don't need to be there right away. So now with this step-by-step -step guide, I can very easily look at this and read this and say, hey, I know exactly what I need to do because I've thought out the logic of this problem. I thought about all the different steps and now all I need to do is write the code to make these steps work. And in this case, these steps are so simple that this is probably all the further that you need to go when it comes to commenting your code. Now, if you have a more complex problem like I'm gonna show you in a little bit, you may need to go a further step than just breaking out the individual steps and instead break down the logic step by step as well. So let's go over to this example for form validation and we're just gonna look at the script tag here and you can see there are tons of comments inside of this explaining everything step by step. And really all this is, is I wanna do some form validation. I'll open up the HTML so we can see. As you can see, we just have a form down here with some different inputs for logging in the user. And I just wanna make sure that all these inputs are correctly entered. So inside here, you can see that we have a bunch of to-dos and these to-dos are mostly outlining the overall steps, the same thing that we did in here. We also notice that some of these to-dos go a bit more involved and they explain step-by-step -step exactly what the code is going to do. So you can see here, we have like select all elements needed, create an event listener that's going to be for the form submit. Again, it sounds very similar to what we've done over here. We have some different functions that we're going to define for showing the errors, clearing the errors. But inside of that, what we've done is we said, hey, here's a step-by-step -step guide of exactly what this part of the code is going to do in order. The first thing we're gonna do, create an array of all the errors. Then we're going to make all the different following validation checks and we're going to populate error messages if these fail. And then finally, if there are any errors, we're gonna show them and prevent the form from submitting. This right here tells me exactly what this piece of code does. Each line is essentially described. First, create an array. Then I wanna check, is the username long enough? Is the password long enough? Do they match? Is the terms checkbox checked? Line by line, I've described the code in plain English. Then when I need to come in and actually write the code, all I need to do is convert English into the actual code. And this is so much easier than just starting with a completely blank page and not knowing what to start with. Because when you have a blank page, you need to think first, what is the logic of the code? And then what is the syntax of the code? Well, when you have all of these to-dos written out, you've already thought through all of the logic. And instead, all you need to focus on is the actual syntax of the code. And when you're learning how to code or trying to tackle a problem that's complex that you've not solved before, it's really hard to both tackle the logic and the syntax at the same time because they're two completely different things. 
So if you could break out the logic into comments and then think through all the logic at once without worrying about syntax, and then once the logic is done, you come in and focus on the syntax and writing the code, that's going to make it so much easier for you to actually build out more complex things such as this form validation. Now, as you get more comfortable writing out code and tackling different problems, you're gonna to start to see some patterns and familiarities, and you're gonna say, hey, I've done something like this before. You can see here where we have all these error messages, we're looping through them. This is something you'll do all the time all over the place. So maybe after you've done it a few times, you don't need to write out this long part of comments about the logic because you kind of have the logic in your mind. You've done it so many times. So as you get more used to coding out these different and complex problems, you'll start to see patterns and similarities with things you've done before. And you can start to remove some of these comments as you don't really need them and you don't have to write them out anymore. But when you're getting started or when you're tackling a new problem you've never tackled before, comments are incredible. And even to this day, I still use this technique when I'm tackling complex problems that I don't really know how to solve. I actually believe that this comment-based approach is by far the best way for you to learn how to program because it makes it so that you can learn the logic and the syntax of programming separately instead of tackling them both at the same time, which is why in my JavaScript simplified course, I have all of these different projects when many of them are commented out in a similar way to this so you can really focus on the logic and the syntax separately until you get to the point that you no longer need these comments at all and you can just write things from memory in your mind. If that sounds interesting, make sure you check out the full course linked down in the description below. And even if you don't check out the course, I at least recommend you try out this technique next time you get stuck because you're gonna be amazed how effective these comments are at getting you unstuck and progressing on your project. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.